welcome to this week on TMB News. I'm Mochi Apimu, and we have a reviving lineup of news stories for you this week, spanning locals, national, and international headlines. And I'm Sudaina. We are your both source for comprehensive news coverage, and tonight we kick off things with a look at the top stories making waves in our community. In our original spotlight, we will be diving into issues that hit close to home, from local events to community initiatives. Stay tuned as we keep you informed on the matters shaping our neighborhoods. Manipur celebrates as two standout athletes, Pukrambam Sushila Tanu and Narayam Roshibina Devi, are honored with the Arjuna Award for their remarkable achievements. President Draupadi Murmu presented the awards at a ceremony in Raspati Bhavan in New Delhi. Roshibina, a Wushu athlete from Bishnupur, Manipur, secured gold medals at the National Wushu Championship and silver medal at the Asian Games 2022. Hockey player Sushila Sanu, born in Nepal, led the junior women's team to a bronze at the 2013 Hockey Junior World Cup. Both athletes embody excellence, bringing pride to Manipur and inspiring athletes nationwide. Manipur Chief Minister N. Biran Singh accused past central governments, including Congress-led ones, of neglecting the state's concern over Myanmar border. He linked the ethnic violence past year to this neglect and called for the BJP to fence the border and scrap the free movement regime FMR. Biran Singh emphasized the lack of security and suggested that earlier fencing could have prevented current issues. In September, he urged cancelling the FMR and border fencing. The FMR introduced in 2018 allowed specific cross-border movement for the Hill Tribe members. A government official mentioned plans to eliminate the FMR and complete border fencing within five years. Biren Singh highlighted the need for border security, claiming attention to the Northeast increased only after Modi took office. Union Minister Rajkumar Ranjan Singh supported border fencing, but not all regional leaders, with Mizoram's Chief Minister opposing it. This raised concern in Manipur where violence is linked to illegal immigration and drug trafficking from Myanmar. Chief Minister Anne Biren Singh announced the creation of an old tribe committee to decide the status of the Chin Kuki community on the state's scheduled tribe list. The decision followed a request from the Union Ministry of Tribal Affairs regarding the demand to remove the nomadic Chin Kuki community from the Manipur's ST list. Biren Singh stated that the inclusion of the Chin Kuki community needed re-examination and the committee representing all tribe members in the state provided recommendations. The state government then conveyed its stance based on the committee's findings. Danabir Maibam, the editor of Huyen Lan Pao newspaper, arrested on Saturday in Imphal over a report on Manipur's law and order situation, was released on bail. The arrest raised concern about press freedom. Danabir Maibam faced charges under various sections, with police claiming the news could cause fear. This marked the second recent arrest of the editor in Imphal following Wakhemsa Samzai's case on December 29 last year. Wakhemsa Samzai, editor-in-chief of Kanglipak Maria, was arrested over a report that police said could trigger tension. He was released on bail after three days in custody. The Nabi's release highlighted the ongoing challenges faced by journalists in the region. Twelve women have been arrested in connection with the assault of a young woman captured in a viral video. They were presented before the Chief Judicial Magistrate Court in four ways on Wednesday and remanded in police custody for three days. The arrest made on Tuesday followed a Suomoto FIR case at the Infal Police Station. A police report seeking custody mentioned that the viral video depicted the victim being mercilessly beaten by an individual suspected to be members of the group Huyen Mamo. The assault was allegedly prompted of accusations of the victim celebrating New Year's Eve with alcohol or liquor. Moving on to the national news, we've got exclusive report and in-depth analysis on the present issues affecting our entire nations. India's ISRO completed the Aditya L1 solar missions in four months. Reaching Lagrange Point 1, Prime Minister Modi praised the mission study of the sun's corona and its impact on space weather. Aditya L1 with seven payloads observed the sun for five years, focusing on its influence on satellite. The success followed Chandrayaan 3rd's moon landing. ISRO had upcoming projects including a human space missions, 
and the NISAR observatory system developed with NASA, aiming to map the planet every 12 days for environmental insights. Prime Minister Modi launched his 2024 Lok Sabha election campaign in Bihar on January 13, focusing on developmental initiative and addressing political concerns. The BGB aimed to secure victory in all 40 Lok Sabha seats, with key figures like Modi, Shah and Nada scheduled for rallies in January and February. Bihar's political landscape have shifted with the BGP in opposition and Janata Dal United, part of Mahaganta Banda government. The battle for all 40 Lok Sabha seats intensified as Nitish Kumar aligned with opposition leaders to challenge the BGP in the upcoming elections. Samra Chaudhary led the BGP state organizations in Bihar for this crucial electoral showdown. Maldives tourism industry condemned derogatory remarks on Prime Minister Modi Lakshwadip visit. MATI emphasized India's vital roles, criticizing Maldivian officials leading to suspensions. Maldives President's China visit amid strain ties was noted. MPs criticized government inactions. Traders and travel agencies expressed solidarity with India, suspending dealings with the Maldives. The Congress Bara Jodo Nayat Yatra, led by Rahul Gandhi, started from a private ground in Manipur, Tobal district on January 14 in state of Infa, due to conditional approval from the state government. Initially seeking permission for Hapta Kangjaibun ground in Infa, the Congress faced restrictions on participants. Manipur Congress Chief Kaisham Magachandra stated that the after last minute changes, the Tobal district granted permissions for the Yatra to kick off from a private land in Kongzam. Congress presidents Mali Karjun Karge integrated the Yatra, covering 6,713 kilometers in 67 days through 15 states, concluding in Mumbai on March 30. The Manipur government approval came with restrictions on the number of participants. India's annual retail inflation reached a four-month high in December at 5.69% exceeding the central bank's 4% target. Food inflation, a significant component, rose to 9.53%, driven by increased prices of vegetables, pulses, and spices. The Reserve Bank of India refrained from interest rate cuts, as indicated by experts. Core inflation, excluding volatile food and energy prices, was estimated at 3.8% to 3.89% in December. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, amid strong economic growth, faced the challenges of containing rising food prices as he are a third term in the upcoming general elections. The RBI first red card was expected in the second quarter of fiscal 2025. The BGP in Assam secured a significant victory in the North Chantra Hills Autonomous Council elections, reflecting confidence in PM Modi developmental visions. The win supported by 35% of the Christian community highlighted the success of inclusive growth and collective efforts. The outcome underscored unity through BGP Developmental Initiative, showcasing the dedications of the party workers. Beyond political triumph, it signaled a harmonious and developmental focused future. And for our global audience, get ready to embark on a journey across the border as we dive into the international headlines shaping our world. Narendra Dhruv Batra, former International Hockey Federation's president, extended greetings on FIH Centenary. He thanked past president, athletes, volunteers and fans, acknowledging support from IOC president Dr. Thomas Batch. Plan to present mementos to Indian hockey athletes, express gratitude to CEOs and everyone who supported him during his tenure. Message concluded with God bless hockey, God bless everyone, emphasizing unity in the global hockey family. Myanmar military government released 9,652 prisoners, including 114 foreigners, as part of amnesty for the country's independence day. The move was described as humanitarian gesture and to maintain international relations. The announcement followed the military seizing power in February 2021 amid ongoing turmoil and protests. Aung San Suu Kyi, still in prison, faced multiple charges. The release aligns with the customary practice of freeing prisoners on Myanmar Independence Day. 
That's a wrap for this week on TMB News. Stay informed, stay connected. Join us next week for another round of compelling news from our community to the world. I'm Ojiya Pimu and thank you for tuning in. Thank <laughs> you.